over with. Slicing enemy soldiers into 438 pieces, taking on giant robots, jumping across firing missiles, and running down the side of a clock tower in order to split a 10-story behemoth in half might sound like a hell of a lot of impossible work for an average guy. Raiden calls this a Tuesday afternoon. Metal Gear Rising Revengeance is the newly resurrected game, thanks to Platinum Studios, that stars everyone's hated protagonist of Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty and favorite badass katana-wielding cyborg from Metal Gear Solid 4 Guns of the Patriots. The marriage of Metal Gear's often ridiculous storyline and Platinum Studios' ability to deliver over-the-top action is an absolute perfect one, and it shows right from the very first level. The series that built itself up on stealth gameplay has traded in its stay-in-the-shadows mechanics for a more combat-oriented approach, aka you'll be slicing and dicing bad dudes in hundreds of tiny pieces without much need to be stealthy about it. The game relishes in action and shines when you're taking on a multitude of enemies, if only to see them be ripped apart by Raiden's extremely sharp katana. With that said, there are sections where a stealth approach is preferred and often rewarded, but in the long run, you'll just want to take everyone on in the most violent way possible. The game certainly has flair, and tons of it. Raiden moves around with an almost ballet-like quality, swinging around his weapon while masterfully hopping around his enemies, striking deadly blows from all sides. Landing a stealth kill from above? Pure bliss. As Raiden attaches his sword to his heel and does a dive worthy of an Olympic medal as it cuts deep into the enemy. Even Raiden's ninja run looks graceful as he deflects oncoming bullets with swift swings of his sword. Revengeance's free flow sword mechanics are certainly the showstopper. Though the game still relies on a good old fashioned mix of light and heavy attacks strung together to form deadly combos. Once enemies are whittled down to a near death state, with the press of the left trigger, time slows and all your rage can be channeled to a single or multiple points by using either the right thumbstick for precision slices or just repeatedly mashing the X and Y button for horizontal and vertical slices. Seeing your enemies break apart into tiny pieces right before your eyes as you rip out their robotic organs is both beautiful and strangely rewarding. Raiden has a few other toys to play around with, courtesy of taking down some of the bosses. Whether you want to smack some soldiers around with a staff that's made up of individual robot hands holding on to each other, super weird, or an electrically charged side that you can throw at enemies to close gaps you'll find the perfect combo that works for your playstyle. Each individual encounter will score you based on time taken to complete, amount of kills, etc. That score can then be used as currency to unlock new moves for Raiden, weapon enhancements, or even completely new costumes. Raiden as a mariachi? Absolutely! The story is standard Metal Gear fare. Wars are dying out and private military companies aren't having that. Africa's just getting a bit too peaceful. Of course, this means ridiculously built humanoid robots with psychopathic tendencies will stand in Raiden's way. Chances are those that are coming into the series for the first time might find themselves a bit confused about the entire premise. Worse yet, I'm familiar with all the games up to Metal Gear Solid 4, save for a few of the PSP games, and I still found myself scratching my head in confusion. Turns out, it doesn't really matter. As much as Platinum is trying to shove a narrative down your throat that revolves around a cyborg private military, testing on children, and salvation through violence, you'll forget all this as soon as you pull that gorgeous blade out of its sheath. Platinum Games might have had their hand in developing the game, but Kojima's DNA can still be felt throughout. Overly long and drawn out codec conversations are still a staple of the game, though cutscenes are surprisingly short and to the point. While there's no dedicated stealth button to sneak around levels, Fans of the series will appreciate the ability to once again hide under a cardboard box or metal can snake style. It's... it's a box. How's that gonna help? The problem with MGR is that it doesn't take the time to explain its mechanics to newcomers. Series veterans will know to call the beautiful girl on their codec to save the game, but new players might miss this altogether. It's a shame because the game begs to be explained in a more thorough manner. The game's very weak five tutorial VR missions do very little to explain the plethora the game has to offer. It's just plain counterintuitive. The game also shows its rough edges in certain platforming sequences. Raiden's jump is clunky and feels almost unresponsive with just a slight delay of the button press. The ninja run allows him to scale various objects, slide under or jump over them, very much like Assassin's Creed, however that series does it way better. The biggest problem with Rising though is its twitchy camera, specifically during boss fights. 
the game is smart enough to occasionally focus on the boss. However, many times it will focus on the boss and then turn itself completely around, leaving you scrambling to find him again. There's a lock-on button, which for the most part fixes this issue. But if the game knows to focus on the boss, we shouldn't have to be expected to rely on the lock-on button. When it's all said and done, the game is primarily about being a complete badass, slicing and dicing enemies left and right. Revengeance is certainly over the top, as it should be, and that's reason enough to pick it up. Just don't go into it expecting a stealthy situation. Metal Gear Rising Revengeance gets an 8.0. Be sure to check out the full review at GameZone.com. Thanks for watching.